What's good everybody? Welcome back to Silver Crown Tech. Now, my last two videos on the MacBook Pro have been the review videos, so both on the hardware and the software side. If you haven't checked those out, definitely go back and give those a look. But I'm kind of tired of talking about the technical side of this machine, and today just want to get into the top four ways I've been using it so far and the two months that I've had it. Now, the first way is definitely not really a surprise to me because it's the main reason I bought the machine, and that's for its video editing capabilities. Now, with the MacBook Pro, I've been using Final Cut Pro to edit the last five videos on the channel. So all of the videos that I've edited before on the channel were on the iPad using the LumaFusion. Now the difference between LumaFusion and Final Cut Pro, even in kind of my first couple of months of using Final Cut Pro, I can see that it is capable of a lot much more than LumaFusion, but I won't get into much detail with that. But the things that I'm excited about with Final Cut Pro is just having kind of more professional tools in terms of transitions, being able to clean up my audio, and the color grading is very expansive and just the options that you have. Now, I'm not really well versed in Final Cut Pro yet. Every time I publish a video, I'm learning more and more things about you know, what I can do and what I wanna be doing. So looking at different tutorials and things like that on YouTube. So I'm very excited on with this software and just the power of the MacBook Pro as a whole has to offer when it comes to video editing. Now, number two, it's something that I knew I wanted to use the MacBook Pro for, but didn't realize how much I was missing this, and that is file management. Once again, coming from my iPad and having only 256 gigabytes of storage to the one terabyte of SSD storage that I have on the MacBook Pro has been somewhat of a night and day experience. So not only do I have four times the storage on the MacBook Pro, the storage is faster. So being able to transfer media is much more fluid. And the way that I'm transferring media is through the three Thunderbolt 4 ports and the SD card slot on the body of the MacBook Pro. So now when I'm finished recording a video, I just plop out the SD card from my camera instantly into the MacBook Pro and hook up my external SSD and transfer the files very fast and fluid from those storage mediums. So I'm not really hung up and wasting a lot of time on how I manage data anymore. Yes, my desktop is still a mess and that's a work in process, but the files are there and they are available for me because you really need a good file management system, especially when you're editing videos for a lot of things to be on tap and the ipad wasn't horrible but it definitely left a lot of room and things to be desired so having this as a much cleaner process on the macbook pro has been a huge plus now with number three this did come as a big surprise to me and that's my media experience on the macbook pro so in terms of listening to music and also watching movies and other video content. Now, as I've said previously, the MacBook Pro has very, very good speakers and for the size on the 14 inch, I think it punches above its weight class and I really enjoy listening to music on it. It has a very deep and rich sound. Now, when it comes to the video media, especially looking at movies on it, it does a really good job with HDR content. Now, the Liquid Retina XDR display is basically powering that HDR content, giving you very deep blacks as well as very bright colors. 
Now a little something about me, I don't really prefer looking at movies on laptops. I haven't really in the past, but with the MacBook Pro, it's a very good substitute. Still prefer my iPad, but if I have to look at movies on here, I'm not really complaining about it, and it's been a very good experience. Now the last way I've been using the MacBook Pro is for productivity. So specifically traditional productivity apps. So think Microsoft Office Suite and even Apple's host of productivity apps as well. On the MacBook Pro, this has been a very fluid experience and a very stable experience because this is what these apps are made for. Yes, you can use them on the iPad, even your iPhone, from the interface to how they feel and just the whole suite of features that they allow. So as I mentioned, you can use them on other platforms, but to me, having them on a traditional laptop will always be the way to go. And I used to do a lot of this work on my iPad, but since I've gotten the MacBook Pro, I haven't even really touched my iPad for any of those Microsoft Office apps and I've just kept it on this traditional form factor. And also using the keyboard too. I didn't realize how much I missed the kind of solidness of the laptop keyboard compared to the thinness of the Magic Keyboard, which is very good. But when you're really trying to settle down, or at least for me, when I'm sitting down to do work, I like that traditional setup. So that's a big win for the MacBook Pro. So that's the top four ways I've been using my MacBook Pro thus far. Let me know what you think about it in the comments and how do you use yours? So if you have a MacBook Pro or any Mac laptop for that matter, let me know how you've been using it. Like the video if you did just that, consider subscribing to the channel if you would like to see more content. Thanks for watching the video. As always, be easy and peace.